All right, I'm going to attempt to describe how this thing works and specifically how a vector network analyzer works. Um, so there are two connectors and there's a little diagram here that kind of tells you what's going on. Um, the arrows tell, we, tell you which direction the uh, electrons are going so they can come out of channel 0 and they can go into channel 1 so they can go this away. Um, and then anything that's reflected back into channel 0 gets looped around over here into a thing called S11. So we can measure um, how much gets put across and how much gets reflected back. So let's take a look at a diagram of that. All right. So let's zoom out a bit here. All right. Um, my pen go. Okay, so this is kind of what we what we've just seen. Ignore these two things here. Um, so again, we can uh, go in this direction. We can go from channel zero to channel one, and then anything that's reflected back will get measured here. And then we can measure things that we call S11 and S21. S11 is kind of the the VSWR, the uh, the return loss, and that is uh, the uh, uh, power that's reflected back in divided by the power that was that was put out. So what came back versus what came out. So if nothing came back, it's zero. If everything came back, it's 100 percent. And then S21 is how much makes it over here uh, divided by how much you went in. So uh, if only half came out, then it'd be 50 percent. So that's S21. Um, now Real vector network analyzers often have uh, uh, the ability to measure the other things. It's the exact same thing, only the flip side of it. So they have uh, one uh, directional coupler that handles this thing, and then one directional coupler that handles this thing. And uh, there's actually some other directional couplers to do other things. But um, there is one way uh, to cheat. Um, I've seen this on, I don't know if it was the Teeny VNA or the Pico VNA. Um, I believe their software supports it, and it supports one of these. Uh, this is a coax relay, uh, four port, and actually it has two ports, and it, what it does, it flips. So it, it, you can hook this up so that uh, when you apply power, you're, you're, you're measuring this way, and you take the power off, you're measuring this way, so it, it, it flips it back and forth. Um, so you could add that and, and write some software, I guess, and then you could have uh, both sides. Or you could just unscrew it and screw it the other way, which is what the poor man's version. Uh, if you're really interested in this one, just swap the two coax cables. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to measure uh, three things. Incident power, reflected power, and transmitted power. So remember, we want to measure three things. So how do we do that? So I made, I, 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 I've seen a bunch of other, I'll show, show some things to you. I've seen a bunch of things, but they were very confusing to me, the way they were drawn. So let me, uh, let me show you this, which I help, I help really, uh, helps. Um, so we have two connectors. Uh, let's talk about this one, because this is the simple one. This is the channel one. Channel one just uh, puts whatever power comes in onto a 50 ohm load, and then you measure it. Um, so this just measures in, input power. That's all this thing does. And um, these are part of a NE612 or an SA612, however you want to call it. But the, the 612 includes a kind of a little uh, differential amplifier in the front and a mixer. And then the output of the mixer is also uh, a, a, a two-channel plus and minus a differential uh, output. So um, it's going to measure the differential voltage across this 50 ohm resistor and it's going to then mix it with something and then output it. So what does it mix it with? Well it mixes it with something called uh, audio down conversion and that's what I'm calling it. It's a frequency, okay? And so these frequencies here go between 50 kilohertz and 900 megahertz, so that's a pretty wide range. So it's not always that easy to measure those things. Um, and so what we do is we're going to mix it with another um, 
uh, frequency. So let's say we're trying to measure um, 500 megahertz, okay? So we have 500 megahertz coming in. And uh, we're going to then mix that with some other um, uh, frequency here. Let's say it's uh, 510 500.1 uh, megahertz, we're going to get 0.1 megahertz coming out, okay? And so 100 kilohertz, so that's kind of an audio frequency. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these RF signals and we're going to down convert them into audio frequency signals. And so this big blue box here is basically a sound card, okay? Sound card or you can think of it as a as an audio frequency spec uh, audio frequency oscilloscope a uh, uh, frame grabber type of thing right and it's a triple channel it can measure three channels remember we needed to measure three things we needed to measure incident reflected and transmitted well here's our three this one's transmitted okay so this is uh transmitted and so uh again we're going to measure it we're going to mix it down and we're going to send it into the audio land and all the frequencies then become audio frequencies and that way our little microprocessor and stuff can handle everything. It can't handle 900 megahertz but it can handle audio frequencies. Okay, so let's look at the other two channels here. Here's, a, here's another coax. This is channel 0. Uh, channel 0 is in a bridge circuit. There's a 50 ohm, 50 ohm, 50 ohm and then the DUT. Okay, so this is DUT. Device under test. So if it's 50 ohms, then everything is matched, and the voltage across the bridge is zero, zero volts. Um, and then if the device under test is less than 50 ohms or greater than 50 ohms, you're going to get a differential voltage across this bridge. And we can measure that differential voltage, and we can mix it down to audio frequencies, and then output it. So this is our reflected port. Okay. So this is reflected. And um, then if we want to stimulate the device and test, output some frequencies, we can do that by, by uh, uh, tickling the top of the bridge. If we can move the bridge up and down, then these middle sections will go up and down, and, and then that will make the voltage go up and down on the device under test but the differential voltage will stay the same. It'll move up and down, but the difference between the two will stay the same. So that's the way that we do a stimulus. So the stimulus frequency goes again from 50 kilohertz to 900 megahertz, and that's how it goes out, okay? Now we want to know how much goes out. We need to calibrate this thing. So this is going to be our incidence. Incident, incident. And it can't be by writing, but this is the incident, right? So remember, incident. So incident, reflected, transmitted. Incident, reflected, transmitted. And everything gets down converted into audio land. And then there's the sound card. And the sound card's able to measure these things. So the very first um, poor man's do it yourself uh, network analyzers. Um, used the PC sound card, so it only had this circuitry out, out, of, bo out of board, and then inside the PC they used the sound card, so they, they needed three inputs. They could use the left channel and right channel, but they were missing one, so they had to put a switch in here, so that they measured two at a time, and then the other two at a time, and then they did some fancy stuff. But in this particular case, we have a sound card in the uh, Nano VNA that is a three input sound card, so um, we're able to do this all at once. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at the block diagram of the actual uh, uh, nano VNA. And so again, we have uh, a transmit port and a receive port. Okay, we have a bridge, so we can we can output things, and then anything reflected goes this away. So anything reflected gets mixed to audio land. This is this is called an an I2S codec, but this is a, basically a sound card, a three input sound card. So we we input uh, the reflected power here, 
uh, we can take the incident power, measure that, and bring that in. So we have reflected, we have incident, and then this is transmitted. So whatever makes it across can go into this one and gets transmitted. So here's our two frequencies. This is our stimulus frequency that goes between 50 kilohertz and 900 megahertz. And this is the one uh, that allows us to down convert things into audio land. Um, and so that goes into here. All right. Uh, this is a, a chip that takes a 20, something like a 26 or 27 megahertz clock and can, and can output it uh, from DC basically up to 200 megahertz. But I believe they're cheating and they're running this part up to 300 megahertz. I don't know how they get away with that, but maybe they found that they're, these, are, these guys are at room temperature. These guys are okay to 300 megahertz, but they seem to be operating this thing up to 300 megahertz. Um, and it's I squared C controlled, so they can IC, IC control the frequency and they can IC control the, uh, 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 the sound card. And then they can output the um, uh, sound card waveforms over a I2S, which is a, a different type of serial, not, not to be confused with I squared C. It's I2S. It's a audio uh, streaming uh, type of uh, type of uh, data stream. And then there's a microprocessor that handles all the buttons and stuff. There's a uh, it's by LCD. This is the touch screen and the battery charge circuit and everything. So this is the entire uh, entire nano. Okay. So I hope that helps. Then if you want to read more about it, I recommend you download this paper. So this is one of the most more original ones. This was uh, 2007 out of Germany, uh, University of Applied Sciences at Ulm, Germany. Um, by Mr. Bayer. Um, this was published in QEX uh, Ham Radio uh, magazine March, April um, 2007. You can find this online as a PDF. Um, and it is very good about showing you the design philosophies of these things. Now there's been a question, if we can only output 300 megahertz, then how does the thing work to 900 megahertz? Well, this explains it. Uh, it shows the frequency response of the uh, direct digital synthesis oscillator. Uh, that's this chip here, this SI5351. Uh, so it has a whole bunch of uh, harmonics that are output. And this is a picture of the harmonic structure. Um, so if you're outputting 20 megahertz, you're also outputting uh, what's called a first image. And so it's the, uh, the uh, carrier. So if you have a 100 megahertz carrier, then carrier minus the output, which is the 20 megahertz, gives you an 80, 80 megahertz first image. It also gives you a uh, carrier plus uh, out uh, at 120. It also gives you 2 times the carrier minus the out at 180. It gives you 2 minus the carrier plus the out at 220. And it gives you 3 times the carrier minus the output at 280. So you have these images that you can play with. So, so these have a certain amount of power in them. So if you're only able to output 0 to 300, you can use this section to, to, to take a look at uh, 300 to 600, and then over here from 600 to 900, and you can use this uh, structure here. So it tells you the secret sauce of how they get more than 300 megahertz. Now I don't know exactly how they get from 200 to 300. That might be a bit of a a trick too of maybe overdriving, overclocking that chip, but I believe that's what they're doing. And then they use this trick. Um, they use these and they calibrate them out. So during calibration, uh, these are all out. Now these are at a much lower power level than the carrier. They they go down in power and then they go down in power again. So that's why the noise response of the Nano VNA, if you look at the published noise response, it's very good here, and then it drops down 10 dB here, and then it drops down another 10 dB here, and that's because of this uh, uh, carrier uh, trick that they do. Uh, here, here's uh, some of the original ways they did the bridge using resistors instead of transformers. Uh, here's actually a hand-built version. Um, here's them actually measuring some things. Um, so it's a very good paper, so I recommend I recommend you read that. And uh, then you can look at the uh, 
uh, you can look at the data sheets for the various parts. This is the uh, SA612 uh, mixer. Uh, here's what it looks like. There's this little differential amplifier. I can zoom in, right? Yeah, there's this little differential amplifier to the mixer. You can actually hook this up as you can input frequencies, or you can actually have this as an oscillator. It's, it's a nice little device. Uh, this is the uh, basically the sound card, the audio codec, and it's the three input device. Uh, very, very complicated, very fancy. And then this is the direct digital synthesis chip. Uh, and it's in a nice little package. Uh, the one that's used, th there's a couple versions that have multiple clocks. The one that's used is a, is a triple output clock, um, individually uh, programmable, three different clocks. They use one as the uh, synthesis, they use one as the audio frequency down conversion, and they use one to give a clock to the uh, microprocessor. Uh, so they use all three of those in the, uh, in the Nano. All right, <laughs> so now you know everything about the Nano, at least you know what I know, and uh, uh, again, please read this, you will know everything after you read this, <laughs> and uh, you can also read some other things about network analyzers and stuff, there's some, there's some trick, this, tricks that goes on during uh, calibration and uh, uh, maintaining phase relationships and how all of the equations that allow you to convert to things like return loss and and SWR and things like that. It's all it's all mathematics. Once you have these S11, S12, blah 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 blah, it's all mathematics from there. And uh, um, yeah, okay, there you go.